We're doing the STEM Expo. This is our second annual STEM Expo where our students uh, from Kenilworth and from other schools around Baton Rouge have an opportunity to show off some of their science demonstrations. Um, it's similar to a science fair, but except in instead of doing an experiment, they're doing a demonstration in which they show something really fun and interactive and then share the science behind it. Last year Kenilworth had the first STEM Expo, but this year we've been able to expand to uh, the whole state to have schools from around the state and uh, they're here with uh, exhibitions on science, technology, engineering, mathematics. We have a lot of students coming from different schools, area schools, presenting simple little projects but having the knowledge in the background to explain it very well. We've got a lot of activities that I think are important to higher education. Having kids really interested in science is really most important in this state. We've got 86,000 jobs coming in the next 10, 15 years, all really related to science and technology in this state. We've got to make sure we have kids that are ready to go and prepared for those jobs. By 2018, more than 50% of the jobs in Louisiana's workforce will require a college credential. Jobs in science and technology are going to be the highest paying of these jobs, and this state's future is dependent on the preparation of your youth in these areas. You know, there's so many jobs that are open now, but people are not qualified for the jobs because they're not educated up to that level. And so this excites me because it gives youngsters an opportunity to recognize that there are opportunities and STEM is the most important thing that we can study and do and it just opens up a whole new uh, area for youngsters to be have a quality of life because if you're educated you can have an exciting life. I'm here to uh, basically learn stuff from the kids. They got a lot of neat experiences uh, to share with me and, and uh, explain how their experiments work so we're here to support this great event. I have a few kids who are um, presenting their demos. I have about 10 or 11 students actually who presented those. So just being here for support and helping them with their demonstrations. What is your daughter doing today? She's doing a science fair experiment. This is her first year at Kenilworth and this is her first year doing the uh, science STEM. She seems very excited. It's very entertaining for her and it's given her a broader view of technology. I come to see my daughter do her science expo on the dancing raisins. My son uh, decided, to, well actually his teacher asked us if he could present uh, one of his ideas um, at this expo and so we just decided to come in and uh, you know see what it's about and, and see uh, what they thought about his ideas. Why is it important that kids are participating in this today? Well it really gives them uh, hands-on experience with dealing with science and hopefully that'll give them the science bug because I think that everybody that really gets involved with science begins to love it and become a part of their lives as they try to build careers. The STEM fields are one of the fastest growing or the fastest growing fields right now and, and our students need to be prepared for a future where this are these are the types of jobs that they're going to have and so to introduce them introduce these fields early on so that they have an interest um, and just kind of understand what it takes get them really interested in these sorts of fields. It's really important because it's helping the students to see outside of just, you know, the, the different professions like doctors, lawyers, but they can be archaeologists, um, just different do jobs like in the entertainment industry, you know, you can do stuff for different companies. It's a lot of different jobs they're exposed to. We're trying to instill in students the importance of STEM education, um, especially to Louisiana to the, the U.S. Uh, as far as the importance of that in finding jobs and how it is a very growing field that they can really find a lot of interesting and fun things that they can do in the future with that. It's important because America needs lots of uh, engineers and technicians in the future. I mean it's one of our most critical shortages in this country and it will persist for uh, years into the future and these kids need to be uh, aware of all the opportunities that exist for them and actually all the fun adventures they can have in life if they you know, concentrate on a technical education. Why do you think overall that it's so important that they start doing this now at such a young age? Well, simply because um, if you don't start young and you wait and you're not uh, up to par with all of your, your math skills and your reading skills and, and, and their science skills and the other thing and you fall behind, you get frustrated. And if, if you get frustrated, then you don't are not interested in school. And if you're not interested in school and you're not educated, the consequences are not healthy, they're not good. And so uh, people who come to this, this, this event is, is an exciting event. I was just talking to one of the gentlemen and, and uh, they have so many people that applied to come that they had to have a preliminary. 
So this is the best of the best, and that's really neat because that means that youngsters are getting more involved in STEM, getting more involved and in, in interested in extracurricular stuff like this, and uh, it's exciting to see. The best way to prepare them is for them to know them and to be interested in them. And the earlier we have that we can introduce them, they really don't understand what's out there. Their scope of, of possibilities and options are really limited to what they kind of see on TV. And so to introduce them to more things so that they can continue to explore them throughout middle school and high school so that hopefully they'll be prepared in, in college to take on these sorts of fields. Science, technology, engineering, and math are the future of where the jobs and the country is going to. So they need people, they need our kids to be able to fill those jobs. So it's important that we start at an early age uh, sixth, seventh grade, even third, fourth, and fifth grade to keep them interested all the way through high school and on to college. Why is it important that they're participating in this today? First of all, um, I think it's important because they're interested in it. It's something that they, they wanted to do, so to, to continue their interest, to pique their interest, that's, I believe is very important. And then second of all, to see these students in the STEM disciplines and um, loving it, that, that's very important as well. Why is it important that she is participating in this today? Because um, I feel that all children need to learn about science. I feel that they need to learn about how to do experience, uh, how to experience experiments and see what's, what else is out there in the world. Well, I mean, I think STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, I mean, when I was growing up, it was the direction things were going, you know, and even more so now uh, that, that children get more of a science-based education. Uh, I think technology is growing far faster than the schools are keeping up with it uh, and you know things like this help reinforce to schools and and and, and to uh, the administrators and whatnot that uh, we really need to put more of a focus on the technology that that's coming out and, and letting these children uh, grow with it you know they got lots of great ideas and and, and we should uh, do a little more listening to what they got to say why is it important that you attended this today because it's, it's it shows how much fun science can be and that everybody else could do it. We want to show everybody what um, all the science projects so that people could get interested and probably come to the school and get like learn here so that people could become somebody. It makes learning fun. I mean, you know, some, some schools don't do a lot of science experiments during class. I mean, my class doesn't sometimes, we're bad. Uh, but it's a fun way to learn about science and have fun. Why do you think this whole event is so important? Because it helps students to branch out in science so they can see it's not only about reading and writing, but you can also get involved in different things. To show that there is not just one type of science project that you do over and over, there's different types, all types. Why is it important that they have this each year? Well, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And those are the basic things you should know to get a great job and have a great life so you can live out your life fully and know you had a great experience. People can uh, learn new things. It's important because it's educational and it helps people get updated on the types of new technology there are. It encourages kids of our age and of every age to go into the scientific category. And especially for me and Carolyn, like for girls, a lot of girls don't really go into engineering or technology, so this was also really helpful in introducing that to them. How do you think this will affect their future? Just preparing them, giving them more options, uh, and I think that's the biggest thing is, is for our students to have as many options to choose from. Uh, and like I said, these are the fastest growing fields, so there will be plenty of jobs available where other fields are sl slowly shrinking. This will keep them competitive in the future. I really feel like this is exposing the children to different paths in life. Um, we have different speakers coming to speak to them. So it's really opening their eyes to the science technology world because I feel like they just think it's computer games and you know um, video games, but it's so much more than that. How do you think that this event helps their future? Mostly giving them the confidence that uh, science is something that they can deal with, that it's uh, not something that's foreign or different, and it's uh, something they're very capable of uh, handling on their own. How will this help their future? Well, I mean, today alone, they're demonstrating their verbal skills, so they're having to interact with adults, with other peers, with judges. 
um, speaking about their experiments, but they're also having to learn the science behind something. And not, instead of just demonstrating how something works, they have to know why it works, um, what would make it not work, and things like that. How have you kind of helped them kind of prepare for their projects, get ready for today, and um, just set up for today, if any? Um, we would meet after school, um, two weeks, I mean, forgive me, last week we met at school twice during that week to get them ready for the elimination phase and then communicating with the parents to see if there's any materials that they needed to get outside of what was provided by Kenilworth, which did an excellent job of that, providing them with materials. Um, but like I said, just meeting after school, talking to them during school, we would meet like in the morning and the beginning or during what we have big break or recess. And getting them to uh, practice their demonstrations in front of their classmates, they would critique each other, give each other positive feedback to help them to improve for the next time that they present in front of their classmates. So. My project is Cloud in a Bottle. And so what we what is the Cloud in a Bottle is that you put a little bit of alcohol in a little bottle and then you get some air, you pump the air into the bottle. So that means that it will put a little pressure, put some pressure on the bottle, and once you open it, it turns into a cloud. And so once it's a cloud, you put the back, you put the air back on it, and pump it, and it will just disappear. Our teacher, Mr. Elkin, he helped us with it, and so he decided that we should, that I should do it, and so that when you put the, when the molecules, it puts the boiling point onto the, uh, into the bottle in the, um, in the alcohol. So once you put pressure on it. It'll just poof. The reversible thermoelectric generator, and what it had, what I have here is, it's powered by heated water and ice. And what it does is, these are called plates, and this plate is sitting in the heated water, and it pulls energy and electricity, negative and positive ele electrodes, from the um, water. And they also have to give off heat to make sure the generator don't get overheated. And it gives four times more energy than the ice do. And when that happens, this occurs, that the fan turns on, and this can help in it, like a, a how do I put this? This can help in a situa situation like if, yeah, if a hurricane hit and it's hot, the power goes out, it's hot. If you had another one of these, all you need is a supply of ice and heated water, and it can help and it can help cool you off and you can be fine. Like my friend here, he has a, a, a memory paper clip. It's not, it's not a regular paper clip. When you put it in heated water, you can bend it however you want to. When you put it in heated water, it turns back the way it was before, the extra shape it was before. I'm doing the paper clip project. It's nitrogen. It's called nitrogen. I bend up the paper clip and I put it in hot water and it turns back to its original form. Explain to me what your project is. Dealing with science is reflection of light. So like the light, it reflects and it's a trick to the eye too. So it will look like I am levitating off the ground but it's a trick, you wouldn't know. So the Wimhurst generator basically, it generates static electricity between these two wheels and they spin in opposite directions and one's positive and one's negative and they go into these metal tubes and it keeps the uh, static electricity flowing in there until it discharges on the metal poles and you can move the metal poles to uh, like the closer they are the smaller the, the charge has to be the farther away the, the larger the charge has to be you can put them like this the poles but you, you'd have to sit there and spin it for a long time the worst thing about the project is that you can electrocute yourself if you're sitting there. If I'm sitting there spinning it and explaining it to you, and I'm holding it down, and it'll shock me if I because the charge keeps building. What's the overall goal with your project? Just to show people how electricity flows. What has been your favorite part about being here so far? Having fun with science. Before before I came to the school, science wasn't really that fun. I mean, I did a little experiments in fourth grade, but it wasn't that. It wasn't really big until I got here. And um, what has been your favorite part about being here so far? Seeing all the people come and learn science and all the children. Because you know a lot of children don't like science, you know, one of their worst subjects. But to see that it's a lot of cool experiments and stuff, they start to like it. I was doing my presentation for the hand crank generator. And um, last year I did the same thing and I was just hoping that I, I had an extension to it this year. So I was just hoping I would place again. How do you feel now that you've won first place? Awesome. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's unexplainable. My project was kind of 
the first of three parts. We were doing NCIS Student Edition, and ours was the season premiere. So we were showing like how in. A